बी हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डील विद इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन प्रैक्टिकल ऑफ सेकेंड एम बी पैथोलॉजी विच इज द मेकिंग ऑफ पेरिफेरल ब्लड स्मेयर एंड एंसरिंग द वायवा ऑफ दैट now this is important exercise not only for second mbbs but it is also a certifiable competency as per nmc guidelines like uh, taking blood pressure putting intracath and saline uh, giving saline to the patient these are the essential uh, certifiable competencies so from that point of view this is important for the third mba students and interns as well so concentrate on this uh, the importance of uh, uh, making good peripheral smear it need not be emphasized and often times we have observed that the students fail to make good smear so first thing is technique uh, doing the correct and nice smear staining it and then do it for dlc or peripheral blood findings now these days the uh, automatic stainers are there the hemolyte uh, hematology analyzers are there even then the significance of peripheral smear examination is there because you can identify uh, the things which are not well seen in the hematology analyzers like the abnormal atypical cells intranuclear inclusions and some platelet abnormalities etc so whatever the flags comes in hematology analyzer those smears need to be screened by the hematologist or the pathologist to see the abnormalities in the peripheral smear which is excellent guideline for the physicians so the matter is simple but it is a matter of practice so little bit of technique and practice will uh, lead you to making a, an excellent smear in the examination so this is the two slide method that you have to perform and you are given the blood sample in the ebd uh, tube in the examination now as far as the slides are concerned one is the slide on which we are going to make the smear and the other slide is known as spread you can put your number here for the identification so last two digits of your uh, exam viva number or your initials you can put for the identification then what you have to do is take the sample shake it well shake it well and open the lid unscrewing the lid and take this capillary you are supply with the capillary in the examination like this so one of the capillary is here so take the capillary and put the drop of blood which is about 2 cm see this you can also use the toothpick like this or any uh, uh, match sticks or also you can be used so capillaries are supplied in the practical lab so this drop optimum drop is essential now this drop from the edge of the this slide is about 1 and 1/2 cm now you put take this spreader hold it between your thumb and the first finger and put the spreader in front of the drop you see this is the drop and you have put the spreader in front of the drop the angle of this should be 30 to 35 not like this neither like this so it should be 30 to 45 degrees then draw this spreader slide backwards what happens the blood spreads along the edge of the spreader slide and then push forward and make a good smear 
so this is easily said than done so after you do this you get a nice smear as may uh, to be shown to the examiners the smear should cover about two thirds about two thirds of the slide it should not cover the entire slide too much of this now you i will show you some of the smears look at this smear this is fairly nice smear this is acceptable and now this is what has happened sometimes the uh, students wash the smear or uh, take the slide and wash under the water and the water artifacts come so you see the holes and this don't wash the smear the slides are already clean and given to you the two small drop is taken this is what happens is very small short smear results if you take excess blood then this is what happens uh, you get very thick and uh, smear covering the almost entire slide now this is the shaky hand and what happens in this case is you take this slide spreader and this hits the finger here and such a type of artifact results if the end of the slide is like this then this is known as tailing effect serrated end so this should not be there serrated end slide should not be there so what we have to achieve is this smear which is having head body and tail let us then stain the slide now what is to be done is take the slide and let it dry please remember the slide has to dry at the room temperature because if you stain the wet slide it will again lead to water artifacts so you have to take the slide now this i am taking in this truck with the bars but uh, in the practical hall you will have the glass rods so you have to put the slide on the glass rods and then you take the lishman stain which is already there and put the drop of the stains to cover the your smear and count the drops now i am putting the drops 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so seven drops my smear has been covered with the stain entirely so after this you wait for 2 minutes or 3 minutes so different laboratory will have different uh, timings 2 uh, minutes and 8 minutes may be there so or 3 minutes and 7 minutes may be there so two or three minutes are for the staining and then you dilute it with the distilled water and that is for the further stain so here i have done the staining so after 2 minutes what i have to do i have to take the distilled water or the buffer and put the additional number of drops if i have taken six drops put 10 drops so i am putting now 12 drops double the drops so that the entire smear is diluted and covered you can slightly blow it should not drain below the slide so then you have to wait for the 10 minutes or so and classically if the dilution is correct on the surface you get golden hue or uh, metallic sheen as it is seen in the surface so after that you put it uh, remove the water and with the wet uh, swab clean the back side of the slide like this let it dry and then do the observation so what you get after the staining is something like this now this is the smear 
which has got three parts head body and tail now the better thing is here now this is the tongue shaped smear covering about two thirds of the slide see tongue shaped smear covering two thirds of the slide now this is the head body and tail so what are the parts of the smear it is head body and tail and where do you see your uh, observations you have to see the observations about 1 cm before the tail end so this is the area of observation because there is natural distribution of the cells in the smear for example in the head region there will be concentration of the rbcs there will be overlapping etc in the tail region you will find more of the neutrophils and platelets and rbcs will be flattened but this area wherein the rbcs are just touching each other and rbcs show central pala that is the area which you have to concentrate for observation of any abnormality so important thing the smear has got head body and tail and the area of observation is about 1 cm before the tail then in case of differential diagnosis you have to observe in the ladder pattern or zigzag pattern because you have to cover the all the irregular distribution that might have occurred during this smear so this uh, minimizes the mistakes in the differential diagnosis so ladder pattern or zigzag pattern is the pattern to observe the uh, smear under oil immersion lens for the differential count now this staining uh, the question may be asked as to what is the stain now this is the uh, lishman stain uh, that we are using what are the other stains is all stains are known as romano vaski stains romano vaski stains which includes lishman stains right stains jimsa stains jenner stains what is the advantage of lishman stain it is cheap and it is also the stain which fixes the smear while it is stained so these are the some of the important points you should remember and practice making good smears in your pathology exercise or practical viva practicals uh, i'll be dealing with uh, questions related to peripheral blood smear that are frequently asked uh, in my other videos so i hope you have enjoyed this video thank you very much